Khonsu's name reflects the fact that the moon, referred to as Ia in Egyptian, travels across the night sky, for it means a traveler. And he also had the titles Embracer, Pathfinder, Defender, and Healer, as he was thought to watch over those who travel at night. As the god of light in the night, Khonsu was invoked to protect against wild animals, and aid with healing. It was said that when Khonsu caused the crescent moon to shine, women conceived, cattle became fertile, and all nostrils and every throat was filled with fresh air. Sobek, also called Sebek or Sobki, Coptic, Romanized, Souk, was an ancient Egyptian deity with a complex and elastic history and nature. 3. He is associated with the Nile crocodile or the West African crocodile and is represented either in its form or as a human, with a crocodile head. Sobek was also associated with pharaonic power, fertility, and military prowess, but served additionally as a protective deity with apotropaic qualities, invoked especially for protection against the dangers presented by the Nile. Sobek has been famed for having been revered by the first female pharaoh by the Nedi name Satsikam Nebit Tawi Sobenferu, present both in the female pharaoh's nomen, Sobek Neferu, SBKNFRW, Beauty of Sobek, and her prenomen Ka Sobek Ri, the Ka of Sobek Are. Batet was the daughter of Are, sister of Sekhmet, the wife of Ta, and the mother of Mihos. Since the Second Dynasty, Batet was worshipped as a deity, most commonly in Lower Egypt. Her form and powers changed over the years. It was believed that every day she would ride through the sky with her father, the sun god Are. As his boat pulled the sun through the sky she would watch over and protect him. At night, she would turn into a cat to protect Are from his greatest enemy, the serpent Apep. Sekhmet was the daughter of the sun god, Are, and was among the more important of the goddesses who acted as the vengeful manifestation of Ra's power. The eye of Are Sekhmet was said to breathe fire, and the hot winds of the desert were likened to her breath. She was also believed to cause plagues, which were called as her servants or messengers, although she was also called upon to ward off disease, too. Thoth's roles in Egyptian mythology were many. He served as scribe of the gods, 20, credited with the invention of writing and Egyptian hieroglyphs, 21. In the underworld, do it, he appeared as an ape, Ani, the god of equilibrium, who reported when the scales weighing the deceased's heart against the feather, representing the principle of Maat, was exactly even. The ancient Egyptians regarded Thoth as one, self-begotten, and self-produced. 17. He was the master of both physical and moral, i.e. divine, law. 17. Making proper use of Ma'at. 23. He is credited with making the calculations for the establishment of the heavens, stars, earth, 24, and everything in them. Osiris, the, the Mighty One, was both god of the dead and a central figure of Egyptian mythology. His cult arose around 2600 BCE, as those of competing deities, including Angidi of Busiris and Kentimentiu of Abydus, declined. 1. For nearly 3000 years, Osiris would stand as one of the most prominent Egyptian gods. The tradition of mummification mirrored Osiris's own experiences. As the god of the afterlife, he decided who was worthy of reincarnation, and who was not. Egyptian goddess Isis was a strong and influential deity whose worship stretched for over 5,000 years. She was revered for so many things, especially for her ability to bring out the best in people. As the goddess of life and magic, Isis used her magical power to resurrect Osiris, her husband, from the dead thereby helping him become the god of the afterlife. She was also the mother of Horus, the falcon-headed god. Ancient Egypt believed that Isis epitomized every positive feminine quality that there is. 
Her role as queen consort to Osiris and later Horus made her the greatest goddess in the Egyptian pantheon. Horus or Haru, or Har in ancient Egyptian, is one of the most significant ancient Egyptian deities who served many functions, most notably as god of kingship and the sky. He was worshipped from at least the late prehistoric Egypt until the Ptolemaic Kingdom and Roman Egypt. Different forms of Horus are recorded in history, and these are treated as distinct gods by Egyptologists. 5. These various forms may be different manifestations of the same multi-layered deity in which certain attributes or syncretic relationships are emphasized, not necessarily in opposition but complementary to one another, consistent with how the ancient Egyptians viewed the multiple facets of reality. 6. He was most often depicted as a falcon, most likely a lanner falcon or peregrine. Falcon or as a man with a falcon head. The name best referred, in ancient Egypt, not to a single god but to a number of gods and demons, who were responsible for guarding fertility and childbirth. Best protected households, mothers, and children from disease and evil spirits. In later myths, Best came to represent positive energy and goodness. Let's take a look at the complex god of fertility and his role in Egyptian mythology. Origins of Bess Historians have been unable to trace the exact roots of Bess, but some say the god may have originated in Nubia, Libya, or Syria. Others dispute this theory and deduce that Bess was derived from other Egyptian gods of fertility. Bess' female counterpart was Beset, and she had the task of keeping away ghosts, demons, and spirits. There are accounts of Bess since the Old Kingdom, but it was really during the New Kingdom that his worship became widespread in the land of Egypt. Anubis, also called Anpu, ancient Egyptian god of the dead, represented by a jackal or the figure of a man with the head of a jackal. In the early dynastic period and the Old Kingdom, he enjoyed a preeminent, though not exclusive, position as Lord of the Dead, but he was later overshadowed by Osiris. His role is reflected in such epithets as, he who is upon his mountain, i.e., the necropolis, lord of the sacred land, foremost of the westerners, and, he who is in the place of embalming. His particular concern was with the funerary cult and the care of the dead, hence, he was reputed to be the inventor of embalming, an art he first employed on the corpse of Osiris. In his later role as the conductor of souls, he was sometimes identified by the Greco-Roman world with the Greek Hermes and the composite deity Hermenubes. Who was the god Seth? The Egyptians' concept of Seth changed over time. At first, the Egyptians saw Seth as a beneficial god. They believed he lived in the realm of the blessed dead. Seth was a god the Egyptians prayed to so he would help their dead family members. After a time, the priests of Horus came into conflict with Seth's adherents. Scholars believe Horus followers subjugated Seth's. Then Seth's role in the pantheon changed. He became the polar opposite of Horus. The Egyptians saw Seth as the god of darkness and chaos. He was also the lord of the desert. Seth became the god of the unclean and an opponent of several gods. Opposing priests destroyed most of Seth's statuary 